burden of proof. There are three main categories and several subcategories that we need to know about before discussing this subject. The scientific, the philosophical, and the legal burden of proof. There are subcategories within those and there are other burdens of proof such as mathematical that we will not discuss in this particular video. It's important to know which category you fall into before assessing who has the burden of proof. A philosophic burden of proof is argued for in a different way than the other burdens of proof would be. For example, if I maintain that there are extraterrestrials in outer space, you might want an argument for it. Well, prove that they exist. How would I do this? I could perhaps cite evidence that suggests that there might have been extraterrestrial contact or witnesses that have claimed to see such things. Or I might simply state that there has been sugar discovered in space and that might lead one to assume that there is indeed life in space. It would become a logical fallacy to say that nobody has proven that there isn't life in space, therefore there must be. That is a shifting of burden to the other party that would be commit the fallacy of the burden of proof. But in the philosophical realm, almost anything is plausible as long as you give good arguments for what you are proving it is potentially possible to argue for things that are not verifiable in the scientific or legal realms to be considered scientific you must be something empirical or measurable in some way or shape or form if it does not fall into this category then it is not a scientific burden of proof you are after. But if you've made a claim that you have claimed is scientific, then you must show something measurable or something empirical. If you fail to do so, then your claim that it is scientific has been voided. The legal burden of proof rests upon the person making the charges. For example, if a police officer charges that you have broken the speeding law, the police officer must prove to the court's satisfaction that you have indeed broken that law. If you wish to counterclaim and say that the police officer is lying, you must prove that this is true. After all, perjury is a serious offense in a court of law, but because that is a charge, you now have the burden to prove that that is true. When someone makes the claim that they have no burden to prove their case, whatever their case may be, under any of these three categories, it is then you must examine what proof do they have that they have no burden of proof. If someone says, I have made no positive or negative claim in this case, therefore I have no burden of proof, they are absolutely correct. If somebody says, I have no burden because you have failed to prove your side, they are absolutely incorrect. I have made the philosophic claim that people have souls. The claim that people have souls must be supported by my arguments. Since this philosophical claim cannot be proved verifiably through the scientific method or the legal method, I must give an argumentation that souls exist or good reasons to believe or affirm that souls do exist. Aliens exist because nobody has been able to prove that aliens don't exist. This is a counterexample because it is a logical fallacy. Simply because nobody has proven that they don't exist does not necessarily mean that they do. Gravity is the force that pulls objects towards other objects. We can see gravity's effects by dropping a object and noticing that it falls towards the larger object which is the planet Earth. Because gravity is something observable and testable, we can affirm this as a scientific principle, and we can give further proof that gravity exists. There are no black swans because we have only observed white ones thus far. This is a fallacy and in fact was found out to be untrue. 
a black swan was discovered. Thereafter, the black swan fallacy was introduced to the scientific community. There is a lot of philosophy behind the scientific method, and it is important for one to understand it before engaging in the scientific method to determine truth. But when you make a claim based upon cited evidence and science, and then say that it is always going to be true, you have made the fallacy within the scientific method. You have not observed that it will be true in the future. Thus, you cannot make a scientific claim that there will never be a black swan. The suspect was found with a bloody bat over the body of his victim. Eyewitnesses attest to seeing the suspect hit the victim with the bat. Other burdens of proof may be brought before the court to further prove that the suspect did indeed hit the person with the bat in question. However, it is only important to note that for the burden of proof, this person has not committed any fallacy so far. They are making a good burden of proof case in the legal situation. Nobody saw my client at the scene of the crime, therefore my client was not at the scene of the crime. This is a counterexample because it does nothing to prove that the client was not at the scene of the crime. In order to make a case that your client is not at the scene of the crime, you must show that your client was somewhere else. Typically speaking, whoever makes a positive or negative claim has the burden of proof. Think hard about who has it and when, and also think about what category you fall into. Please feel free to ask who has the burden of proof in any given circumstance? Be as clear and concise with your question as you can possibly be, and I'll do my best to answer your question and explain who has the burden of proof and why. If you like my channel, prove it by hitting the subscription button. And if you hate my channel, then prove it by hitting the subscription button.